Who am I speaking with? Hi, this is Shankara Subramanian from the University of Arkansas. And uh, I must say that I was, uh, I was taken by your study. Let's take a look at it here. Mechanisms underlying social loafing in technology teams and empirical analysis. So what do we know about loafing right now? So it is known that people tend to loaf or withdraw their efforts when they work in teams. Because teams provide a context where there are others available to whom responsibility could be shifted to. So show me what we got here. You were saying right here, the team size and team dispersion, those are the two factors that we know that when they go up, loafing increases, correct? And what you want to find was what? Right, uh, from prior research, we know that when team size increases, people, it becomes, the there are conducive conditions for people to engage in loafing. Again, when teams are dispersed, when members are not present in a co-located setting, it gets much easier for people to engage in loafing because there is no way others can put a social pressure. There is no way people are looking at you, they can know. So the condition is very favorable to cut back on one's efforts, do whatever one wants, and things like that. So what were the variables that you found that were, I guess, the highest factors for you know, people's explanation of loafing? Okay. So this is what we did. So because it is already known team size and dispersion can cause loafing, we were interested to know what is it that team size and team dispersion do, or how do individuals use these two mechanisms to engage in loafing. So we use Bandura's theory of moral disengagement, which is basically used to explain deviant behavior. How do people engage in deviant behavior? So Bandura has advanced several mechanisms like advantages comparison, displacement of responsibility, moral justification, and five other mechanisms. We just chose three mechanisms as a case in point in the context of a brainstorming, brainstorming context. Brainstorming is often used in companies to solve problems, come up with new product ideas, resolve issues, etc. So we chose these advantages comparison, displacement of responsibility, moral justification. We found that with increasing team size, people are more easily able to displace their responsibility. Because when you have just three people, there's just two other people to whom you could shift your responsibility to. But when the same team becomes like eight people or 10 people, there are so many others. You no longer feel you're doing a wrong thing. You feel it's just one eighth of the work that's going to them. So you feel, if I don't, my, my contribution to it is a small part. If I don't contribute, I'm not making a great deal bad to the team. There are so many others to compensate for what I do. So, so let's go back. You you boil it down to three items here: the uh, the comparison, displacement of responsibility, and moral justification. And you found which of the two? Well, they're actually. I mean, you said you found that two of them really had were greater contributors to this. And what were those two? We found that the two mechanisms of among these three, we found displacement of responsibility and advantageous comparison to be the factors that drive loafing. Explain that to a person, like what would that be? Okay, so displacement of responsibility is where the, the actual definition goes obscuring or distorting the agentive relationship between actions and effects they cause. So basically this is this. In the context of displacement of responsibility, people displace their responsibility to the several others available in the team. There are so many others available to whom so here if you see the graph, if you see the diagram here, you find that the relation goes from team size to displacement of responsibility. So when people know the team size is large, there are so many other people available in the team, it becomes very easy for people to shift responsibility to the several people. But you don't see the same in the context of team dispersion. If you see the graph here, you find, you don't find the team, so it just means team dispersion is not necessarily a bad thing. Especially today with virtual teams, the teams getting dispersed, we don't find a statistically significant relationship to claim that team dispersion, in fact, leads to greater loafing. So in actuality, team size to the comparison and displacement of responsibility were essentially the highest uh, contributors, yes? That's right. We found advantages comparison and displacement of responsibility to be the greatest contributors among these three mechanisms. So sort of in summation, how do you sort of watch out for that and, and protect yourself? What, what would be your advice? All right.
So, so one reason why people are able to displace responsibility could be that there are not clearly defined metrics. That is, people have their own benchmark that they feel this is the quantum of work I need to do. If I don't do it, there are so many others to do. But if you fix responsibility, clearly have clearly defined policies and maybe metrics to measure what individual has done, this is not going to surface. So something like you know, open office environment where people are not necessarily questioned, such conditions can, while they do motivate the real performers, people, there are people who can take advantage of such, such system. So it's a very thin line for managers to strike a right balance because you don't want to micromanage. You want to make sure people have the free time, all the, they, have the, they have the power to decide how the week goes, how they want to work. But again, the managers want to decide, maybe after a few weeks of observation, to whom necessarily benchmarks or guidelines should be set and for whom a free-riding free technique could be given.